Now it's very nice to know the process of creativity, but you know, when you're staring at this white piece of paper and you don't know what to draw, you still don't have an answer to that problem. We now know how the process works, but we still don't have an idea. Now personally, when I get stuck, very often it has to do with expectations. I feel like I need to do a perfect drawing because it's for my portfolio or maybe I want to post it online so it needs to be good or I only have limited time so I don't want to waste it or it has to be for this client and I want to make a good impression. Anything that's an expectation in it can block your process because when you are being creative, you need to be free. You need to allow yourself to make mistakes. They are actually a vital part of any form of growth because only outside of your comfort zone you will achieve growth. If not, you are doing something that you already know the outcome of and you're just repeating something that you are already capable of doing. So try to find a way to lower your expectations. One way that works really well for me is to think of my work as studies. You know, I don't need to impress anybody. I don't, I'm not creating a finished piece. I'm studying, I'm learning. And another thing that helps is not to do just one drawing that needs to be the one, but do 50 of them. There's this story about two groups of people who were creating pottery pots and they were divided in two groups and they had one week and the first group was asked to deliver one pot and it had to be as good as possible. The other group, their assignment was to do as many pots as possible and it didn't matter how they looked, just as many as possible. So after a week when they turned in their pots, the funny thing was that the group, the second group who had to do quantity over quality, they also had much better pots because they had so much experience creating those pots and every time they did another one, they learned from their mistakes and they improved on it. So. A good way to improve is to do huge quantities of work and not to care too much about how perfect it needs to be. So one thing you can do to push your creativity, get your ideas going, is to get started. You can wait for inspiration and wait and wait f for the perfect timing, wait for this perfect idea, but sometimes you just got to start and see what happens. So let's just, let's just start and do something like this. Now, I didn't have an idea. I just drew something and basically what I did is put something on my canvas that helps me to be creative because from here I can start associating. For example, I can create a drawing based on this. You know, I don't know what it is, but let's see. I see this, this character in there. It's funny that you start and by putting marks on the canvas, you will start seeing things and respond to the decisions that you make and certain that I wouldn't have come up without, you know, starting with this stain. And it's a great way of, of generating ideas, even if this isn't necessarily the design you will eventually make, it can spark ideas. And especially because it has something in there that doesn't come from thinking. It doesn't come from theorizing of, of, of uh, and, and coming up with this perfect idea it kinds of it frees you up and helps you to to think of just think of shapes associations with shapes what does it make you think of what does this brush stroke lead to you know doing one brush stroke leads to the next and before you know it you know you have a, a character with a certain 
feel to it and you create even you know you you were stuck before but now suddenly there is this piece of art that wasn't there and it doesn't matter if it's good or bad you know you only get to the good stuff by by starting and creating and if it doesn't work just fix it try something new you know come up with an, a different solution try to understand why it didn't work how you can improve it um, all those kinds of things and this is just one approach because no one told me I needed to look at this and turn it into this guy you know I could as well think of it in a completely different way and you know maybe maybe this is a tree based on the the exact same shape I come up with with something completely different one of the reasons for that is that there is no goal I don't care what I'm making I'm just looking at the shape and from there I'll, I'll start you know to let my mind wander what could this be where can I take this and let's just see what happens so now suddenly it it turned into a tree when I created my first children's book I came out of art school and I was overwhelmed by the possibilities I was doing impressionist paintings and I was doing sculptures and I was doing line drawings and everything in between and when I had to do this children's book I didn't know where to start for me I didn't feel like I had a style and anything was possible so what I did was create boundaries limitations I chose gouache as my medium and I wasn't allowed to use outlines for my characters and I was allowed to use gradients so these limitations really led to a style where I was able to do a whole children's book that felt like this was a world that was unified and each drawing had a relationship with another drawing because of these clear design rules I did the same thing for another book that I created where I could only use ink lines and flat coloring if you look at this caricature this is an acrylic painting and in my design choices I made really clear rules actually the whole face and the whole design is in blue and purple colors and only at the lips and the, the earrings and also the, the eyes slightly you know the points of interest where I want the, the viewer to look those areas have color different than the overall color also when you look at value the lightness of the color this is the, the mouth has black and the eyes have black the other parts of the image don't have any black at all so these were rules that I set for myself I couldn't use black in any of the other parts of the painting and as a result you get unity but also it helps you to be creative because you have to find different solutions when you look at your reference and you will see that the shadow is pure black and you are not allowed in your world in your painting to use black there suddenly you're mixing a, a pretty light color of blue for a very dark shadow and you become creative and the result is that you get a painting that has a clear vision so what I did with the stain this one is to set a boundary for myself but the process was exploratory so what I did was to start and see where it led me and this is a really fun process it's really where phone doodles you know when you're on the phone and you're just doodling and something really nice evolves because there are no rules it doesn't matter where you end up you just go and you wander around you explore and this is an important part in creating designs but you also need another part because if there's a client and he wants you to draw Santa Claus and you start with a stain and it looks like an old lady 
then you won't meet the needs of the client. So you have to find a way where you combine this exploration with design that has a goal. And I think it's important to set a goal because it, it gives direction, but I think it's equally important to have in your design process the liberty to explore and, and wonder because that's where you get to think out of the box and come up with unique ideas. So by now we have looked at the four steps of the creative process and also now we know how to get started in this creative process. So let's do just that. Let's get started. This week our focus will be on the creative process itself because we will follow this process every week. Those steps are always a part of what we will be doing. So this week we'll start and get comfortable working with this process.